So how do the layers actually interact with each other? You have layers one to seven, how do they connect to each other? Well, the way it works is that each layer will provide some kind of service to the layer above. And in order to deliver that service, it will make use of the services of the layer below. And in terms of what that looks like in the traffic that goes over your network, you'll see that the data from one layer is encapsulated inside frames of the layer below. So here is an example of what a frame might look like on the wire. You've got some application data. Let's say it's HTTP, it's part of a web page. That application data is carried inside a layer four segment. So that's a TCP segment for HTTP. That layer four segment is included inside a layer three header, which would be uh, an IP datagram with its own header with the IP address where you want to go. That IP datagram then might be delivered across an ethernet. So the ethernet has to have a layer two header put around that. And then you will get the start and end of the frame marked with a layer two. And then that entire layer two frame will be sent across your layer one network, which might be your cat five cable or your fiber optic cable or whatever. Now, this is all very, very real. You can see all of these parts in a packet. If you use a tool like Wireshark to decode your packets, then you will see each of these fields and Wireshark can decode them for you. These are all things that actually happen on the wire. Let's uh, take a few other examples about these layers. So what about equipment that works at layer four? We already talked about equipment that works at layer one, two, and three. If you're looking at equipment that works at layer four, what does that mean? Well, it means it will inspect the layer four header, the UDP or TCP header, which means that it's going to be looking at the port numbers. So if you think about a network device which makes a decision based on what port numbers are in your packets, then you're thinking about something like a firewall. The firewall will have rules that say, allow from this address to this address on this port, but block if it's on a different port. Uh, a NAT device that does network address translation is also something that works at, at layer four because it has to manipulate the IP address and the port number in each of the packets to make the job work. Those are examples at layer four. What about layer seven? Could you have a device that works completely at layer seven? Well, yes, you can. So you need to think of an example of a networking device which actually looks at the packet right the way into the application layer protocol as well. And so one example of that would be um, a, a firewall that does deep packet inspection or an intrusion detection system. So those kinds of device are actually looking right inside layer seven information. You might also think about things like a web proxy. So a web proxy will take the entire HTTP request, analyze it, decide whether that uh, request can be answered from its local cache and then send a response back or whether it needs to contact another HTTP server on the internet. So that's an example. Another one would be a mail relay. So a mail relay will receive an entire email message, look at the headers, look at the envelope, decide where to send it next, and then forward out a whole new email message uh, using SMTP. Those would be layer seven uh, devices for networking. So another question here is, what layer does a wireless access point work at? Well, wireless access points in general are carrying ethernet frames, ethernet frames encapsulated over the wireless. So a, a true wireless access point is a layer two device. You can plug it in and your devices will join a layer two network and they will be peers with your other layer two devices. Your wired ethernet devices and your wireless ethernet devices can see each other on the same subnet. It's the same broadcast domain. However, if you buy a wireless access point off the shelf, you may find that it also acts at layer three. It may have routing and NAT functionality built in. And so the kind of consumer access points you often buy will have five ethernet ports on them. There will be four marked LAN and one marked WAN. On the WAN side, they will pick up an IP address using DHCP. So an IP address for the device itself. And then they will route at layer three. And then the four LAN ports will be on a different subnet and there will be NAT going on. So it really depends how your access point is configured and where you plug it into your, uh, into your network and which port you use on, the, on that device as to whether it's a layer two or a layer three device. In a campus environment, really you want it to work at layer two. So you should either turn off the layer three functionality 
plug directly into the layer two ports. Um, and if your access point has a built-in DHCP server, then turn that off as well, because that's a layer three function and just have it working at layer two. Um, that's the best way to operate it because it gives you the most seamless ability to join the network and to roam between access points uh, without having to change subnets. Okay, so here's another question. What is a layer three switch? <clears throat> now that doesn't seem to make any sense because a switch by definition is a layer two device and a layer three device is a router, it's not a switch. So what a layer three switch is, is a device that can be a router or a switch. Uh, one box, depending on how you configure it, can either switch or it can route. So normally when you buy a layer three switch and you take it out of the box, the default factory configuration will be as a switch. It will be a flat layer two network. There'll be a single VLAN, all the ports will be in there. And if you just plug it in, it'll run as a switch. But if you log in and change the configuration, then you can turn on routing functionality so that it will inspect the layer three headers, look at the destination IP address, you can build forwarding tables, you can turn on routing protocols. All of these things can be turned on. And so it can be a router as well as being a switch. Thank you.